Hello everyone, welcome back. Myself Rahul. Hope you are doing good. So today we are going to solve a problem related to arrays and recursion. Problem name is subsets. So it's a very easy problem. So in this problem uh, we are given an integer array nums of unique elements return all possible subsets. The power set. So solution set must not contain duplicate subsets. Return the solution in any order. So here we are given an input vector nums with values 1, 2 and 3. So what are the possible values uh, subsets we can generate over here? So one is the empty set which doesn't contain any value. One set is just containing single elements 1, 2, uh, 3 as well. If only two elements are present, so those will be 1, 2, 1, 3 and 2, 3. And if all the three elements are present, it will be 1, 2, 3. Right, so basically we need to generate all possible subsets with a given input vector and in the input vector it has been given that the, all the elements will be unique so there will be no repeating elements. Similarly in this example we are given a nums vector of just single element 0 so it will be an empty vector and a vector of single element. So how do we solve it? So it's a classic example of recursion where we just uh, basically visualize our recursion tree and uh, input the basically place the whatever value we have encountered till now in our vector into the answer vector. So let's see like how the recursion tree basically builds up in this problem. So here we have this input vector 1, 2, 3. So let's see what value, what is the return type we have to return over here. So here we have to return vector or vector of int in C++ so we have at every stage like insert a vector of int into this output vector right so we are give, we are given in this input vector 1 2 3 so what are we going to do over here is um, how are we going to generate all possible subsets so if we observe carefully over here then like we can see that at every point so if I start from the zeroth index of the array at every point I have two possibilities with me whether I can consider that element to be a part of the uh, my subset or it may not be a part of the subset. So I have two possibilities at every point of time. So suppose I start with an empty vector which is v, let's call it v, right. So at this particular time I have a possibility that I consider this zeroth element, uh, element present at zeroth index in my input vector or not. So let's suppose I consider this element 1 to be a part of my subset or the other possibility can be I don't consider that element to be part of my subset right so here I have considered 1 here I don't have I haven't considered this one now I reached this one so here as well I have two possibilities with me I can consider this 2 to be a part of the subset or it may not be a part of the subset. So if it is part of the subset, then my input vector becomes 1, 2. And if I don't consider 2, then I just remain with 1 as it is. Here as well, I have two possibilities. I can, can consider 3 to be a part of the subset or I may not consider 3B to be a part of the subset. So in that case, I will just be uh, remaining with 1 and 2. Now coming back to this here, uh, I haven't considered 2 so here as well I have two possibilities I can consider 3 or not consider 3 if I consider 3 then the subset would be 1 comma 3 and if I don't consider 3 then it would be as it is just 1 now coming to this right side part of the tree here I haven't considered 1 but I have two possibilities can I consider 2 over here if I consider 2 the part tree the subset would be 2 if I don't consider 2, the set would be empty. Now coming to this 2, I have still 2 possibilities. I can consider 3, then it would be 2, 3. And if I don't consider 2, the set would still remain as 2. Now coming to this empty set, I can uh, consider 3, which means the set would become 3. And if I don't consider 3, the set would remain as it is empty. Right, so as I can see, like I have reached the end of the array in the iteration so whatever value is present as the leaf node is a answer in itself so these nodes are the answer in itself so i just need to populate these output vectors into my answer vector so let's 
so basically i have to return vector of vectors right so in this case what i can do is i can create one like what i have created is i have created this v vector and this v vector is has been populated with values based on what recursion step we are in so if, if i am at this particular recursion tree then v vector would have value 1 2 3 and once i have reached the end of the array i would have inserted this v into the answer vector answer is nothing but vector of vector right this has been inserted into this answer so how are we going to write this particular piece of code let's see so i'm just going to write a simple uh, recursion function so how this recursion function is going to behave let's see so first things like the function that we are going to write what all arguments i need to pass in that function so firstly like while iterating over the input array i need to make sure like what index currently i am at so if i start from index 0 so these are the indexes 0 1 and 2 so i also first thing i need to know is the index which i am currently at in the input vector the second thing i need to maintain is this vector v so i need to pass this vector v so this is the second argument the third argument will be the input vector which is nums in this case so only i would require these three arguments in my recursive function right so let's call my function as func only so in this i am going to pass index uh, my vector v which i am populating at each point in the recursion and my uh, input vector right so i will basically check if the index value has reached the last value of the input vector so if index is equal to equal to nums dot size which means i have completed the iteration over the input array so it means at that particular time i can basically put in the answer vector whatever i have accumulated in my v so answer dot pushback v i can do right so that's what i am doing over here like if index value is num sort size which means in the recursion i have reached uh, i have gone past the leaf node right so at that particular time i will just insert whatever value is there in the v into my answer vector right and also i told in the beginning that every at every point i have two possibilities with me so first possibility is i take the current element so if i take the current element so i need to push the current element of the recursion on into my v nums of i would be inserted into my v Right, and I will recursively call this function with the next index. So index plus 1 would be passed over here, v would be passed as it is and nums would be passed as it is. This is the first case in which I am taking the current, current element. So this is the tick case. Second case is if I don't take the current element which that is I go to the right hand side of the tree. So in that case I need to firstly pop whatever I have pushed onto the vector. So v dot pop I will perform and then I can basically uh, again call recursive function in the same way. Right, so let me write the code and uh, like the code would be much vis properly visible over here. So I will create one vector which I have to return. Let's call it answer vector. And another vector is vector of int v and one function I have to make which I am going to call recursively. So let's call that function func only. We can rename it later. But uh, what all arguments I have to pass in this function. So I, as I mentioned I need to pass three arguments. First is the index from where I am going to start which will be 0 and the vector v and the input vector which is nums that's it so let me write the recursive function the recursive function is not going to return anything it will be void so here i'm going to pass three things index um, the vector also this vector would be passed by reference because we are going to change its value during the recursion calls and i need to memorize these uh, vector values during the course of the recursion so i'm passing this value as a pass by reference over here 
and the input vector would be passed as simple as numbers right so first basic check i can perform is if index value is equal to equal to uh, nums dot size which means i have gone past my leaf nodes so whatever value has been it means i've reached at this particular point so whatever value is present in the v vector i just push that v into the answer vector so answer dot push back v and uh, i can return from that point right and now i have two possibilities with me first possibility is i take the current element to be part of the answer to be part of the answer ans to be part of the vector v that means left hand ref, left child of the tree so at this particular particular point i will just push back whatever value i have at the index uh, index value index right so so nums of index so whatever value i have at in position index i will just push back into my vector v and i will again recursively call my fu uh, function with value as index plus 1 so second case would be this was the first case that was the second case would be if i don't take the current element present at the position index so don't take the element present at index so at that particular at this uh, it means i'm going to the right hand side of the tree so one thing i have to uh, take care of over here is i have already pushed back the current value present at the position index so i firstly need to remove that using v dot pop back and again recursively call the function with the next index value right uh, yeah this function would be called recursively and in the end i just need to return answer let me try running this yeah it's perfectly fine i will submit this code so this was a classic example of recursion and backtracking so there are a lot of problems related to uh, recursion and backtracking so if you want to look at the similar problem so it has been mentioned over here subsets to uh, pro problems related to letter case permutations and some other problems are there like combination sum is also there which is related to recursion and backtracking so i would recommend you to go through these problems and uh, practice like and try to build the recursion tree by yourself and you will get a better hold of the things right so keep on practicing and i will see you next time with another problem thank you everyone